Okay, if I could have your attention, please. I'd like to once again welcome everyone here. I guess uh, our friends from Lake George didn't make it. But I don't see the bull bears anywhere. We're hoping that uh, we'd have representatives from just about every lodge in the northeastern uh, New York and northwestern Vermont area. I'd like to thank everybody for taking time to, to make this trip to welcome our new state manager. My name is Calvin Castine. I'm president of Lodge 462. As you all hopefully know, this uh, event is being co-hosted by the Albert Vermont Lodge and the Plattsburgh New York Lodge along with, with our lodge in the Chazy Champlain Process Point area. And we have representatives from the Watertown area. We have some uh, people all the way from Connecticut. Andy Spear and Betty. Uh, Glenn Spiles is represented here. Indian Lake couldn't make it. And uh, any other lodge I didn't mention? That's here, Glenn Spiles, I think I mentioned. I guess that's it. For those of you who do venture up into the northern tier, this past week, the village of Rouse's Point very kindly put up two Woodman of the World signs for us. You'll see one going in on Route 11 near the Carrier Apartments and one when you come in from uh, Vermont at the bridge. And uh, this color, this was left over, there wasn't really room to put this up. This of the Lodge 462 meets on the third Sunday, but they're, they're nice big signs and for people from, from throughout the area, I'd like to uh, encourage you to get these signs and get them put up in your community. I think it really adds to make the women presence known and uh, it's nice when you're traveling. I know where the Bryans are from down in Alabama, they probably go through a lot of towns and, and see those familiar women signs and it'd be nice if up here in the Northeast that we have that same thing. So our lodge is hoping to do this uh, annually, put up a couple of new signs in different towns that our lodge serves. So something I'd like to see the other lodges in the area uh, consider, because it doesn't cost our local lodge anything to get these signs. I have to is guarantee that they'll be put up properly and, and kept up. We're gonna ask, uh, later on, we're gonna ask State Manager Brian to come up here and, and say a few words, but before we do that, we have a little bit of, of business to take care of. We have a couple of presentations that we, that we wanna make. And the first one is one that it took us a long time to be able to present because it's a past president's pen, and this guy was president for years and years and years. And the vice president just never wanted to to see this president uh, move out of that spot, but he finally did. And uh, he did a heck of a job for, for those many years. He's president of Lodge 462. And he is also um, Lodge 462's nominee this year for the Fraternalist of the Year Award. This is uh, an award that has different levels. Uh, each lodge is encouraged to submit a name, a worthy name, for this, this honor to the jurisdiction. Uh, the jurisdiction uh, winner will then go on uh, throughout the Woodman, and then the Woodman representative will then go on again with our other fraternal congress of throughout the United States, which is, I think, over 100 societies represented in that. So we're hoping that this person will uh, not only be our nominee from 462, but will be the jurisdictional representative and, and maybe go on beyond there. I'd like to present this past president's pin and card to uh, our past president and a trustee from the New York New England jurisdiction, Mr. Sherb House. Camera right there, Mr. Evans. Good health. Thank you very much. And it's customary to have a 10-minute speech after. Well, we've got Dwayne. Dwayne will be... 10-minute speech. 
That'd be cutting you back, though. So. <laughs> Thanks, Dwayne. Ten minutes to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> In recent years, the movement has come up with a, a new award. There are a lot of ways to recognize deserving people. And the women uh, looks for these ways and encourages the lodges to do so. In the past, there was a Mr. Woodman Award and a Women of Woodcraft Award. Recently, they've consolidated those two awards and they now have a Fraternal Spirit Award for outstanding service to your lodge and to your fellow members. And this can be given to an individual or to a couple. And Lodge 462 is very proud to present this award. It's the first time we presented the Fraternal Service, Fraternal Spirit Award. And we have two, uh, we have actually many people who could come up here and receive this, but unfortunately we're only able to, to pick one, or in this case, a, a couple in a particular year. The, uh, the lady part of this is uh, probably the most popular member of our lodge. She's the treasurer, and we all know that the treasurer is an extremely popular person. Anybody is, I know in my house, the wife, my wife's the treasurer, and she's always called on. And the other half is active in our local lodge, active in a lot of other organizations in addition, and he's also a trustee in the New York New England jurisdiction. And uh, not related to the Whitman, but he just recently took on a, another volunteer effort to, uh, looking to uh, possibly consolidate some efforts with the local fire department in the town and village of Champlain and and Joe just within this past week has taken on that responsibility too. So we'd like to present the first ever ever fraternal spirit award to a great uh, duo, an active active duo in the Lodge 462, Joe and Mary Lavalle. Maynard F. and Mary LaValle, yes. <laughs> Over here where Aaron can take your picture. Yeah. Yeah. Over here, Maynard F. <laughs> oh, no, I'm supposed to be in the front. That's right. Aaron's going to be able to see you. Are we all going to be able to get in the picture? <laughs> 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 a, a rose between two thumbs. <laughs> Any acceptance speech, Joe? Nope. Nope. We also have a couple of life labor citations to present. This is a very uh, serious award that we are honored to be able to to present this award. And, uh, I'm very happy that years ago the <coughs> Woodman Society out in Omaha came up with this idea. It's allowed us to present uh, this for, I think we've been doing this for probably 12 to 15 years we've been able to present this Lifesaver Citation. In fact, one of our recipients today uh, said that, is it your uncle, Doug? Yeah received a, a legislator citation from, the, from our lodge many, many, many years ago, maybe 12, 15 years ago. We had uh, several natural disasters in our area this year. Most memorable for most of us, of course, was the ice storm that kept most of us out of power for two weeks or more. And as we were recovering from that, and uh, we were waiting for things to get back to normal, as we approached spring, we got this huge snowfall. And when that snow melted, combined with a little bit of 
ice that may have melted at the same time, all of a sudden our temperatures went from freezing to 75, 80 degrees, and the water, the ice, snow all melted at once, and our brooks and rivers were all overflowing. And uh, there was very close to being a, a disaster in the, in the Champlain Perry's Mills area. I've asked uh, Jim Sorrell, the mother of the young girl who was saved. Father. Father. Just being father. <laughs> I always get those two mixed up. I'm sorry. Mother and father. Jim is the father, okay. <laughs> the significant other in a relationship. If he'd come up and describe a day's event. <coughs> I appreciate Jim doing this, but I don't think I could do it. The only reason I can do it is because the North Country and the people involved have made my family complete again. On the day of March 31st, it was 84 degrees in Champlain. Um, we had terrible flooding. On the 30th of March, which was a Monday night, we had eight and a half inches of water over our road. We couldn't get out. On that day, the 31st, um, my wife called me and said she was going outside with the kids and my two nieces, who their home was flooded from the weekend, to play in our backyard, which was dry and it's nice and we live anywhere near a river. Um, my neighbor decided to come over with her granddaughter to play and to um, help them get back home. Um, they were all outside. We took my wife tried to put a board across our driveway because our driveway and all the covers had been washed out. Well. A two-year-old, my daughter Alexa, curious minds that she has, just disappeared in the blink of an eye. And um, at about that time, it was about 10.55 a.m. that morning, I got a call at work that she was missing. In the meantime, my wife calls 911. They're on their way. My brother-in-law, Guy Kupel, who was present here today, happened to come along to pick up his children um, to spend some time with them because our house was still flooded. And my wife yelled to him and said, Guy, the baby's missing. So he immediately took action and started walking down the road. And he found her about 500 feet from my house in a ditch at the bottom. And uh, he had all the strength he could do to pull her out of this ditch. The water currents were tremendous. He got her out, he got out, and with God's work, and the work of the men that came along, Doug St. Dennis, a local bread man, Daniel Bayshard, and Peter Timmons, who could not make it here today, they were the four members of Crucial and Saving My Daughter's Life. They got her back, our local rescue, Fletcher Allen and CVPH, has made my life and my family's life complete again because it's, the whole North Country is just heartwarming, loving community. And without them, and their support, and the cars, and the phone calls, and the little teddy bears, we wouldn't have a complete family. God knows what to do. Dwayne knows what to do. That man called me two days after we were in Fletcher Island, talked to me, and Sometimes those words just over the phone are the best words that anybody can hear to let you know that they're thinking about you and your family. And it's the prayers that the community can get because it keeps your strength. But those four men are my daughter's guardian angels and they'll never be forgotten. Today and tomorrow, they'll always be in our lives. It's very important. There's always people out there watching you and your children. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. There are certain criteria that the Home Office requires in order for us to present these, and they're very strict on what they're presented for. Uh, Peter Timmons is not here today, but had he been, we could not 
because he is an EMT and he was acting as an EMT. Uh, they don't make this award available for that because we end up. We all know the, the work that the EMTs do, and uh, we'll be presenting an awful lot of these awards. So we present them for the people, the people on the street kind of deal who provide CPR. And there are two people that uh, Jim mentioned that did that. Doug St. Dennis was the first one on the scene after Guy found Alexa. And then Danny, Danny Bashard happened along after. The Lifesaver Citation says, in recognition and commendation for swift and courageous action under stress which saved a human life by administering cardio cardiopulmonary resuscitation procedures. It's presented by Whitman of the World, and it's signed by our National President John Bookout, and Executive Vice President Wayne Graham. And if I can impose on the Sorrells again to present these, I'd like to present them now to Doug and to Dan.
Kelvin mentioned about our watch halls in Alabama, and uh, I think my wife will testify to this. You know, we had probably three times as much membership in Alabama as we have in New York. But I've seen as much fraternalism since I've been in New York. Um, that right there is so heartwarming. What I just saw uh, it's pretty tough to come up here and make a speech in front of all of you. Uh, that's, that's kind of tough because i got a two-year-old, and uh, it's pretty tough. But uh, I really appreciate being here. It's a good bunch of people. I see Dwayne just walking in back there. Dwayne's been trying to run me off ever since I got here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he's uh, he's been pretty tough on me ever since I got here, and uh, so it's uh, it's very encouraging being here. There's a lot of good things going to happen in the North Country, though. I know uh, from the field people that I've met, uh, you people are blessed, and uh, from the people that I've met here today, they're blessed because they've got you supporting them. And uh, you know, back when women was first started, it was probably at a time when people uh, needed each other fraternally, probably no worse than they do today. And, uh, you know, in very few places uh, can you go and see the brotherhood that you can see in a fraternal insurance company like you can see at Woodman. And uh, we need to all be more like that every day in our lives and people we meet, just not in our activities as a Woodman member and that kind of thing. We need to treat each other uh, that way uh, every day. But uh, we're really excited about being here. We, we moved uh, 1,200 miles away from, 1,300 miles away from our families, and it's very good to know that we have a Woodman family here that we, we can say we know people in, in the North Country. Uh, we're really excited about it. You know, it's kind of funny uh, talking about the accent. I'll go back to that. When I first got to Albany, this guy was very interested in the way I talk. And so he said, uh, I've been flying back and forth, and so I had to drive up one time by myself to get one of my vehicles here. And so when, he, when I told him, he said, how did you get here? I said, and he was kind of like, you know, is it possible to get here from Alabama? And I said, well, he said, he said, did you drive? How long did that take you? And I said, well, after the second day, my horse gave out. <laughs> so it's been kind of interesting. You know, I, every, every place I go, every place, every store I go in, I have to explain where I'm from. And so now I get to tell people I'm from New York. So uh, we're excited about being here. And we thank you so much for this. This was very thoughtful. We didn't expect it. But it just shows you what kind of uh, people we have in Woodland. And uh, we appreciate you so as much as I know you do, the people that uh, around you. And if we can ever help you, I'm down there in Albany, but I, I tell you, if, if, if driving up here, uh, it was such a beautiful drive that I'll be coming up here a lot more, I tell you. So if you ever need me, just call me and I'll be right there. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. As I said, this is uh, being co-hosted by the Plattsburgh Lodge and the Albert Lodge. So if anybody from Rodney Barber, anybody from 1016, would like to come up and say a few words? See, no. Anybody but, except John Babby would like to come up here and say a few words? <laughs> <laughs> I told John this morning he was responsible. Um, <laughs> John's your spokesman. He's in trouble. <laughs> And now, yeah, got to ask Raj Wan Herman. Is anybody out there besides Colby? Dwayne, would you like to come up and say a few words? A few words? Put them in the right order? We've only got the room for an hour. That's it. We're right, going over. by four. It's an hour now. That's why I'm sitting here. I don't want to hear anything about you. Three. <clears throat> and most of you know I've probably been in the woodland for about 20 years now, okay? And I've been up and down all kinds of hills. And it's, we've just had another hill put in front of us. We've got to break into the state manager. Uh, those are tough jobs. And he called me here about two and a half weeks ago and he said to me, he said, you know, he said it's amazing. I said, what's that? He's down there in Alabama. He says, they've got my house sold. Yeah, he said, one big job. He'll represent his wife, so that, just like that. I said, that's right. They don't want you back yet. They, got they want to get rid of it. Jim Clark, we told him he'd last here about eight, nine years. Oh, did, we, did, we, did we miss that time, Mark? You're headed. 
<laughs> you have trouble speaking English. You, you don't understand me, right? No. <laughs> no? Okay. Fraternalism. Jimmy Surreal and his family joined Woodman a couple years ago. Sure, has been with Woodman for quite a few years in his family. Calvin Castine the same. When I look around the room, I hear Andy Spear, Calvin Castine, and I think there's one or two others I've hired in here. It doesn't make it any better or any worse. But the thing is, is I've been so blessed. Sherb's house. Sure. <laughs> this, this is hard to say, believe me. Sherb House is a little girl. Sent me a list a little over a year ago. And said, can we get these little girls into Woodman? They'd like to go to Woodman camp. Well, I guess I put about 18, 20 lives in the Woodman hands. This year, I got a call about three weeks ago, and the little girl said, I've got some friends, can you get them in the Woodman? And I said, we probably can. And I'll probably write 35 more lives in the Woodman. The strength of fraternity, uh, you know, fraternity is beautiful, but the human beings that are in there that make up the actual, I mean, you can call it anything you want to call it. You can call it fraternalism. I'm telling you, when people get together, unite as a force, else nobody can stop them. I used this a while ago when I had a talk in, in Ross's Point. One woman, one woman, I, and I don't want to offend anyone, but one woman in 1973 challenged the Supreme Court of this nation. Her challenge was Roe versus Wade. That challenge today has taken 35 million lives out of the U.S. of A. They were friends, relatives, brothers, sisters that have never come to this world. They're gone. The power of one human being is unbelievable. That little girl that was just up here, I could not help myself in calling her when she was in the hospital. Why? Because <laughs> it was a mom and dad attached to it. It wasn't a bill of rights. It wasn't an amendment of the Constitution. It was a mom and dad. Mom and dads and other children make up with them. I love you all. Thank you. Did anybody understand what he was saying? No. Okay. <laughs> if uh, anybody else would like to get up here and would be willing to share the microphone. If not, I'm going to call it out to this portion. We want to thank you all once again for making this trip. I think it was a nice turnout. It was some rainy weather out there. And again, we have this room till 4 o'clock, so we hope most of you, if not all of you, will stick around and enjoy yourselves. Thank you for coming. This is Calvin Castine. We're in Rouses Point, New York. We're actually just outside of the village of Rouses Point. We're still in the town of Champlain. Governor Pataki has just arrived. This is a groundbreaking ceremony for a Canadian button plant. Uh, he was supposed to arrive at 2.30 and he's not too far off. The news media is surrounding him. Uh, we see uh, Senator Ortloff up there along with uh, Assemblyman Excuse me, Assemblyman Ortloff and Senator Stafford are up there, along with the governor. And uh, he seems to be the center of attention at the moment. Well, we're staying back here out of the potential rain. Thank <laughs> you. 
Would everyone please stand? There was a time when I said I don't want any more birthdays. Governor, I don't say that anymore. And we want you to have many more. Join me in happy birthday to the governor of the Empire State. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear governor. Happy birthday to you. Ladies and gentlemen, great day for the North Country again, and I emphasize again.